Going back to Misty Island. Are we? Oh yeah, we're going back to Misty Island, Father Ted. We're going back today. <laughs> we're going back to Misty Island and stopping it off at Peaky Island before we get there. Meet me by the entrance to the fire cannon. I mean, you can invite Guardian or other people you know. I feel like you know a lot. Bring the power cells and hurry. Know a lot. That's funny. You like. I am as wide as an ocean, deep as a children's puddle. A bird could bath in my knowledge. A bird. <laughs> I'd probably go on someone else's. I probably have clips or something here, but I'd probably go on someone else's. You know, I could pay him. But at the same time, I really just want to get rid of the Misty Island, so we'll finish up these guys when I start the stream next time, because it's just a lot of talking and watching their animations. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead, and uh, since I helped the fishermen, I can now go to Misty Island. I mean, technically, 100%ed. Um, basically, I've already 100%ed, I just got to pay people. 100%ed, save for the orbs. Forbidden Jungle is completely done. Fire Canyon, that'll be easy. Misty Island, I go. I'm coming, Father Ted. I'm coming. I love Father Ted. I've never watched full episodes of that. I've seen one episode, and it's the funniest one where, um... Cause for context, they're on a little... I Wow, that was quick. They're on a little island off the coast of Ireland, and... He takes the lampshade, he puts a lampshade on his head, and he holds his eyes up at the corner and says, Look at me! I'm Chinese! And he looks out the window, and there's uh, there's three Chinese folks staring back at him. An, an old woman and an old man. And he stops, and he goes, Raimi! I don't remember what the other guy's name was. Raimi! Oh, what is that? Oh, those were Chinamen, Father Ted. Oh, I can see the Chinamen. What are Chinamen doing on Creaky Island? Oh, they're from Chinatown. Creaky Island has a Chinatown! <laughs> and throughout the episode, everyone keeps calling Father Ted a racist. <laughs> he goes outside thinking he's going to go and apologize to him. And uh, some guy behind a little stone, cobblestone wall says, I hear you're a racist now, Father Ted. And the best part is that some people think he's racist against other people, like the one lady says, Oh, you're right, Father Ted. Be racist against them. Those damn Greeks be messing with everything. <laughs> and the guy says to the lady, It's not the Greeks he's racist against, it's the Chinese. Oh, we can be racist against them too. I love Father Ted, that is a hilarious show. <laughs> oh, the island when they get the one drunk priest, they get him sober. And he says to him, Where am I? Where have I been? Oh, you're on Creaky Island. I'm on Creaky Island. What do you mean I'm on Creaky Island? I drank to get away from Creaky Island. <laughs> Turns out he spent his entire life intoxicated on Creaky Island. All his life he wanted to get off it, and instead he got so drunk he... Oh, so that stuff can kill me. But all his life he wanted to get away, but instead he simply stayed there. Alright, so they're a double hit. Okay. You gotta remember my Spyro-type enemies. Oh! Oh, this is Muse! I can get it. Oh god. Oh no, I'm having flashbacks to Spyro on the Egg Thieves. Fuck off. God, why is it so difficult? It's a Muse! This- oh, how the hell do I get you? I don't have a charge attack, this isn't Spyro. Um, okay, I feel like that possibly could've killed me. God, this feels weird without a, um... Oh, oh, I nearly got you, you little minx. Come back here. You little fucker. Come here. Got you. Body him. Yeah, put him in there. Ah. If I ever stream Spyro 3, uh, you're going to see some rage. You're going to see some rage because those little egg thieves in Spyro 3... Oh, they are not to be messed with. Especially that last one when you go to space. After you uh, make the rocket. I hated him. I positively hated him. Because I could not get him. And I constantly kept killing myself. And Oh. Oh, okay. I guess I know how to use that now. I could play through the rest of Misty Island. Or I could head back and give him his little muse. You know what? We're going to give the guy back his muse. We're going we're gonna to be good people. 
for once on this stream. As soon as I remember where the where the hell I parked the boat. I kind of saw it and started chasing it. I forgot where I am. I could probably just kill myself to get back to the start. Death is a surprisingly available option in video games. Video games were Canada before Canada. I mean, I always remember Uwe Boll. Say what you will about Uwe Boll. I respect the man. The man is respected in this house. Why? Because he made the Postal movie. The Postal movie is great. It is beautiful. It should be view. It should be mandatory viewing. Okay, maybe not. I, I've always suggested that Blazing Saddle should be a movie someone should watch before they graduate. But the Postal movie is great. When he's there talking and the guy's saying, "So, oh. those power cells. I'm waiting at the head of Fire Canyon, at the top of the cliff behind the farmer's house." Okay, that's nice. Um, Uwe Boll in the scene when he's cameoing in the film, and the guy's saying, "So, are the claims true about you financing your um your movies?" Oh yeah, I do fund them with Nazi gold. It was all right there, and no one was using it. Someone had to use the gold. And then the old lady comes forward and says, You bastard, my father died in Auschwitz. And he looks at her and he says, Well, my father died in Auschwitz too. He fell from a god tower. <laughs> oh, okay, I gotta give both credit. Uh, he, he went through, he was okay poking fun at himself in that movie. I mean, he gets tackled by the dev, the um, running with scissors dev of Postal 2. He tackles him to the ground and starts beating the crap out of him. Postal, Postal is just a, it, I can't, I can't call it a great movie, but I can call it a legendary movie. Surprisingly not made by legendary. If you ever play Postal, Postal 1 original, uh, is, is a little, little sadistic and edgy. Eh, it's okay. Uh, Postal 1 Redux or Remake changes the dialogue to be a bit more tongue-in-cheek. Postal 2 is the god tier 1 that everyone respects. Postal 3 is the one not made by Running With Scissors that no one likes. Postal 4 is... I haven't played that one. And Postal Brain Damage is a boomer shooter. Uh, honestly, the only one that feels like Postal 2 is Postal 4, so... Eh. And I, I don't mind Postal 4, even though... John St. John does an A-OK -okay job. He does an hey, A-OK -okay job. Check out old fish speedboat at the dock. Am I missing? I feel like I, oh yeah, the mayor. I gotta bribe him. I remember he did a movie with postal stamps, so my brain is kind of messed up. When you say tongue and cheek, what does that idiot mean? Oh, tongue and cheek means, uh... Comedy. You're doing stuff, but it's not 100% meant to be taken serious. Like, uh... Battlefield 2, The Bad Company, Battlefield 2, Battlefield Bad Company and Bad Company 2 are tongue-in-cheek military shooters. There's comedies. I mean, the pin on the grenade is a smiley face. <laughs> it basically just means it's a comedy and something that typically is serious. It does not mean a film can't be serious when it's tongue-in-cheek, but it, it can typically, typically it's for laughs. Men in tights. Blazing Saddles. Good, good, jolly good. My dating life. The... Good morning, my neighbors! Hey, fuck you! Yes! Yes! Fuck you too! 